Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them is an upcoming movie that continues the universe of Harry Potter, starring Eddie Redmayne, who, you know, kind of got on the map doing a movie as Stephen Hawking and was in Les Miserables, blah, blah, blah. Les Mis. <laughs> Um, so, the question is, Harry Potter, for a lot of people, not necessarily me, but for a lot of people, are very in to that franchise. They read the books as children. The ch um, when Jay and I were growing up, I remember in elementary school, Harry Potter books were the thing to read. Everyone was all about Harry Potter. So we grew up with it, and then we watched them age alongside us, basically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we um, were the same age every time a new book came out, just much. about. And it was uh, interesting. It introduced us to a new world of wizardry and Hogwarts. So Almost every single child of our age group growing up in the 90s on their 11th birthday sat up all fucking night waiting for that goddamn owl that never showed up saying, hey, you're going to Hogwarts, motherfucker. And very true. like, no. So no, it was a very muggles. cool world and it appealed a lot, especially to us because... You know, it was the protagonist was in our age range. Mm. Um, so now the franchise has reached that inevitable point where it's gotten so popular and it is so easy to make money on. We are now branching out with a movie called Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Harry Potter is not the main character. It's going to change things around. So how do you, because full disclosure, I'm not personally a huge Harry Potter fan. You like Harry Potter quite a bit. Fuck yeah, I do. So how do you feel about branching the franchise into a new direction well i'm a little torn I, I i the only thing is i did have a slight issue i don't like how the the, the movies ended up and the books ended yeah. up wrapping up mm -hmm. i don't necessarily think i agree with that storyline i think it wasted a little bit of opportunity but at the same point i mean like i said most people growing up in the 90s when they turned 11 we were waiting for that fucking owl and we were all sadly disappointed. And you know what? I'm going to watch this movie. I mean, those movies, though they left a little bit at the end to be desired, it was still a great story, and it captured the hearts and minds of so many. Well, here's a question. What is pulling you into the universe of Harry Potter? Is Harry Potter the protagonist, the person you grew up with, the person who you watch struggle through everything? Is he what you're really into, or is it the world that he is immersed in? And I mean, It's a little bit of everything, because yeah. everyone, especially where, be, again, being the generation that grew up with him, you're looking at uh, an individual who goes through some very awkward stages, which albeit to a far lesser degree than what he went through. Every child goes through those phases, whether you have good parents, bad parents, you're wealthy, rich, everybody has these awkward experiences where they feel misplaced, and it's something that you can relate to. And then on top of that, you add a fucking world that is just far beyond anything reality could ever give you and mm -hmm. has endless limitations. I mean, how can you not be immersed? Well, I think that this is really going to show us something because with Lord of the Rings, which is a totally different franchise, mm -hmm. um, but they did the same thing. You know, they made The Hobbit, which was previously one book, a much shorter book, into three separate movies, including some notes and things from Tolkien. Um, but that was interesting because they continued that franchise very connected to Middle Earth, like the things that happened in Lord of the Rings, but with totally different characters. And now we're kind of doing the same thing with Harry Potter, but here's the fundamental difference. Lord of the Rings was always about multiple people. It was about a group of people who are part of a world. I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Harry Potter because it very much was a traditional narrative. It followed Harry Potter. He was the main character, and we took the journey with him. Mm. Lord of the Rings, you were kind of changing who you were taking the journey with. So it was easier, in my opinion, to translate that to The Hobbit. And The Hobbit did make money. It was profitable. It did get nominated for special effects and things. But it wasn't as successful as the original trilogy. So it's going to be very interesting to me to see what happens with Harry Potter, because honestly speaking, we're going to see what people were really into. And that, this time gap that they, they're they going to have, I think that's going to hurt them a little bit. And, I mean, 
you have people who are attached to the main characters. I mean, yeah. you have seven books of people being invested into a whole horde of characters and characteristics, and now you're going to come in with a whole new crowd, and that's going to be tough. Yeah, time's going to tell. So you are going to see it, though. Oh, of course. I mean, you gotta you got to dip your toes into the water. I mean, well, personally, in for a penny, in for as a someone pound, right? who was on the fence, kind of iffy about the original franchise, obviously, I'm not going to be diving into opening night. But I'd like to hear from Harry Potter fans. Well, how do you guys actually feel about this? Do you think this is bullshit? Do you think this is a cash grab? Or are you really into seeing more of the universe? Private Ryan is a very linear plot. Mm. Band of Brothers has a lot of different plots, mm. and there's a lot of different motivations and a lot of different things going on throughout the mini 